Yes, sir. Uh, you can start your presentation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Srinath, for this wonderful opportunity for us to present how artificial intelligence can revolutionize your industries um, so that uh, we can all have better quality, safety, and productivity. Um, so, so this are all. This is the agenda we are all going to uh, handle today. So, um, myself and Hari Shankar will be co-sharing the uh, talk. So, we will be covering the following topics: uh, What is artificial intelligence? How the computer vision can be used in artificial intelligence? What it's meant for factories? That's the key thing we will be addressing today. Uh, please don't worry. We will not be talking about any theoretical part, uh, any non-complex things. No programming. We will just addressing about how artificial intelligence will be useful for factories, how it can address and improve the safety, quality, and productivity. And we are going to show you some real demos actually. And finally, we will touch up upon how the IoT sensors and Industry 4.0 work together. And finally, uh, like Mr. Prinat said, we will be having a question and answer session. Um, so. We just want to show you one animation video here. I will we will replay the video again. So what is happening here is the four clip to us carry some very expensive set of boxes and those carton box fall down and then the camera on the right was able to detect something fell over and then it is rising an alarm or a, a detection that object fell down along with the details like when it happened and what time and so on so this is one video let me show you one one let us show you one more video Here, the camera is trying to detect whether the particular person is wearing the PPU equipments like helmet, safety goggles, gloves, and so on. So you can see it is it's able to detect a boot, but other things are missing, like helmet, safety gloves, and, and other things are missing. So you may be wondering why we are showing this animation video and not the real demo. We will come back to you on the real demo during the course of this uh, session. So I will let Hari to take over and present about uh, the introduction on artificial intelligence. Over to you, Hari. Thank you so much for Balaji for handling all the session. Hello, everyone. Uh, a very wonderful good evening to everyone present here. Uh, I hope you and your family and every kit and kins are uh, well protected and safe uh, in this pandemic situation. And I would like to uh, thank you again for your wonderful uh, time on the Sunday evening uh, with us. Okay. Uh, so to start with, uh, we would like to uh, get you uh, give you the glimpse of what is artificial intelligence. So I hope uh, everyone has idea about what is artificial intelligence. Still, we would like to uh, give what is it about, uh, just uh, like a rehearsal before going to the main picture. Thank you. Uh, so what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is just like uh, uh, enabling the mission uh, to imitate human behavior. So we are humans. We do have six senses. Uh, but what is machines? Machines are all created by us. Uh, like what if the uh, like when the humans fa fail to do any monotonous job, but the machines are not like that. Uh, it will always uh, perform the stability of this random uh, graph, even in the uh, like a uh, worst case scenario in the monotonous jobs. Uh, next, please, apology. Yeah, uh, like uh, imitating. Uh, when I said uh, imitating human characteristics by the machine, uh, it is like a uh, uh, like sensing the visual power. Uh, thinking power, executing power, 
everything in a computer friendly way uh, like uh, building everything uh, in a computer friendly way that is called artificial intelligence uh, the next thing is uh, why do we need ai as i said just now computers are always better than humans uh, in specific scenarios terms and conditions apply uh, like why uh, when you put some humans even uh, you can take me as an example and we we face multiple people in the real time every day day to day life uh, what uh, everyone will do when you put someone into a monotonous job their performance will be great and uh, and it will reach the highest point in the graph for a particular period of time after that they will find it boring they will find it monotonous the accuracy the like a uh, productivity drops it. so that's why we need machines to uh, do the uh, monotonous jobs very efficiently and nothing is more reliable than the, the computer for that yeah next slide please yeah why uh, artificial intelligence is better than uh, human limitations you might be uh, asking uh, we have already uh, entire factories are uh, running by machines we can simply do that right uh, like whenever you want a machine to be running you can go and on and off the switch and everything and so on you will have a, a set of field labs uh, field supervisors to uh, supervise them and managers to execute your uh, business plans but why do we need to uh, have artificial in place uh, or other than in advantage to the uh, machines object recognitions so when you think uh, like uh, when you uh, say there is a person called tom and harry uh, when uh, tom and harry is discussing uh, tom, tom is a security guy and harry is the manager guy when uh, tom is uh, explaining some uh, security threat to harry uh, he will be saying uh, i see a person who is black in color who is of like a 5 5 feet or 6 feet of height uh, but he will not uh, like when you ask him to uh, draw a picture about him the humans will not do but the computers will do that's where uh, we need artificial intelligence humans simply cannot explain the property uh, clearly Uh, if they say uh, like a, like how I explain it, uh, they will not uh, able to uh, market it, uh, jot it down into the exact accurate points. Likewise, face recognition. Uh, like uh, if you ask the computer, uh, can you show me the person who visited at the time of uh, after 11 uh, p.m. in the night? It will show you this is the person that visited uh, uh, the premises after 11 p.m. But but if you ask the man uh, as a human, uh, he will not be able to jot it down. because we uh, do not follow the standards we talk from the memory and we do not talk from the intelligence next point please yeah likewise uh, we also use uh, naming of colors in the uh, humans like uh, when you say like all of uh, whatever the dark colors it may be you will say either it is a grayish or a blackish but when you talk to the computers when you uh, ask from the computers it will uh, uh start you from the aspect of what it is whether it is a hexadecimal color or the rgb color or, or it is a white or black color it will give you with absolute standards and it will not uh, just uh talk from its knowledge it is from uh, based on the standards that's why we need artificial intelligence uh there are a few fields uh, in which ai is doing a very great job i know like uh, even you might not have no uh, whether this is artificial intelligence but you might be a user of artificial intelligence already i hope everyone will you everyone will of you have uh, mobile phones or smartphones like that and uh, you might be either using uh, in the nowadays either it is an android phone or it is an apple phone in google android phone you will have google assistant and in um, apple phone you will have siri uh, both are using uh, natural language processing it is a field of ai it deals with uh like what you are linguistic models uh it will observe uh, your speech uh, when you talk to him and uh, build it as a linguistic models and based on its learning it will apply to it and do it say like hey siri uh, call to my driver it will search uh, like it will interpret your speech and processes with the missing learning data and then uh, it will uh, talk to the machines in their own uh, understandable machine understandable friendly format so this is how it happens like was it is speech recognition and there are uh, many more sectors are coming down in the speech recognition uh, models uh, over like uh, uh, how to uh, form like a speech to text conversions in the modern day to day life uh, every doctors are almost uh, using uh, speech to uh, text conversion uh, which will save a lot of time uh, for them and then the computer vision like how i uh, like uh, mentioned in the earlier sense we are trying to uh, empower machine to imitate the human behavior which is we can sense uh, through eyes ears nose taste and all the first thing is uh, like uh, natural language processing and speech recognition comes 
in the form of a uh, brain which uh, and the ears it listens to it and interprets to it and uh, uh, converts the data into the machine and uh, friendly uh, data then next comes the eye part or the computer vision part what is computer vision uh, the name is uh, self explanatory i hope so uh, computer vision in the sense uh, vision is what you see computer vision what the computer sees and what it is uh, analyzing from what it sees that is what computer vision is uh, but you need to manually uh, program it whether what it need to like uh, uh, what does the computer need to do when it sees the uh, person in the prohibited uh, area for more than uh, like a uh, during a curfew of time you need to uh, give it the command to execute it and then robotics uh, i know robotics need not uh, need an introduction but uh, robotics is uh, all the uh, artificial uh, intelligence fields come find uh, whether it is hearing uh, or it is execution of what it needs to do when it sees something uh, uh, like uh, even in uh, our industry 4.0 revolution everything is being automated through robots next slide please so uh, in this presentation uh, there are uh, we would like to uh, dive in deep about the computer vision that's fair uh, we wanted to ensure safety using computer vision on other fields in ai what is computer vision people generally use computer uh, vision as their primary we, uh, you can even taste sense smell and more or less sensory uh, touch uh, feeling as well but uh, people uh, the primary uh, sensory uh, organization that people use is the vision first so uh, we are trying to empower the uh, mission uh, in this manner next point please yeah we are going to uh, use this powerful facility of understanding and surrounding uh, empowering the computer through use this uh, visual uh, organization system so uh, here uh, artificial intelligence empowers the machine uh, to decide what it needs to be do done uh, when it sees something for example uh, if you install a uh, security camera uh, you turn it on uh, when you go to sleep uh, say there is a home surveillance system uh, you are going away from home town for 2 to 3 days uh what will you do uh, you need to uh, uh, like a uh, theft detection install a theft detection system when uh, any person is going out uh, please uh, email me or text me or call to the nearest police station when someone is entering the uh, premises uh, you will set up in a home so uh, the computer sends uh, someone is coming uh, it needs it listens that it is something that needs to be reported immediately it uh, uses iot sms and email notification to the nearest police police station and alert you uh, in cc so this is what uh, empower this is just one example of uh, empowering uh, computer uh, in the visual perspective next slide please yeah uh, here i would like to uh, i have given a, uh, i hope i have given a good introduction about what is artificial intelligence and what is computer vision in it but i would just like to uh, take a one minute more uh, to explain uh, what happens uh, what is computer vision how are we like uh, say we have a calculator we have smartphones we have laptop we have tablet and we have any more thing like why uh, everything is not uh, doing what artificial intelligence is doing how artificial intelligence is being applied in the area of computer vision say uh, so i have clearly said uh, we are using computer vision what, how will the system will interpret the uh, what it sees it is uh, obviously uh, through the camera it can be cctv cameras it, uh, it can be your mobile phone cameras it can be your laptop cameras so uh, any images that is will be uh, taken as input from the uh, input system will be put to the uh, machine learning model that is image acquisition when the video is uh, taken from the particular uh, set of uh, input devices what will do is uh, it will take frame by frame say uh, you are providing a live stream of a video uh, like a third uh, it is it will be a, like a house and house of data but it will split into frames uh, for a normal uh, streamless video it will take around at least uh, 18 to 25 uh, uh, frames of uh, uh, data per second uh, to be uh, play uh, seamlessly that our machine learning model will interpret that and break uh, the second into multiple frames to take uh, images uh, next process please and that's how uh, image acquisition happens after the image acquisition that means the frames have been broken down 
the pre-processing happen. What is pre-processing? You cannot just uh, give the image uh, to the computer. You need to uh, tell them uh, in a friendly way, in a machine learning uh, friendly way that it needs to be done in binary. Either it can be a binary form or something like that. You cannot, uh, likewise, you cannot uh, pass the image in the binary format. You need to break down into a grayscale image. You need to either, uh, whatever it can be in a uh, colored manner, you need to make it as a grayscale image. A grayscale image is like simply uh, you're just making it as a uh, black and white uh, image. That is what uh, happening in the pre-processing stage and feature extraction. So uh, when you say feature extraction, it is like uh, say you are giving an uh, image of um, sunrise across the two mountains that we used to, to uh, draw in our school days. Say you're giving an image of uh, the sunrise be behind the uh, two mountains. What will do the image uh, machine learning model that look for the picture break into pixel by pixel and then it will identify there are two triangles in the inside and there is one thing something uh, in the circle format so that is what it will uh, that is how it will interpret so there are two, two triangles and there is a one uh, circle so uh, we will be uh, that that is how the feature is extracted uh, it will uh, look for the jotted down lines uh, using the grayscale images you will have an outline of how the image is uh, present to that uh, with that, uh, you'll be able to uh, take the consider the features. So now the machine learning uh, part will know there are two triangles in the looking in the upward direction and there is a circle uh, portion. So uh, next is the classification um, establishment. It can be the triangle can be anything even from the samosa uh, shape to whatever the triangle can be anything. Uh, but the computer needs to tell you uh, that this is the mountain and the sun, the picture of the mountain and the sun, because it will, it cannot, uh, there are uh, so many things in the uh, shape of triangle and so many things in the shape of, uh, in the shape of uh, circle. It can simply tell you like uh, there are two samosas uh, placed upwards and there is uh, one donut uh, placed over that. It, it will be also uh, so looking like that because the computer will always understand there is some shapes on it. So how do you establish that uh, classification readiness that this is a uh, mountain and not a samosa, that this is a sun and not a donut? Uh, how does that happen? That is what a classification. Uh, it will uh, it combine all those existing models that is in the knowledge base and recognition and interpretation uh, will happen and then the re results will be produced. You might be thinking, okay, the com we are giving an image, but we are uh, getting output like this is the sun and the mountains. How will that happen? Because uh, like a take a, a character of a child, we may uh, we will be all a child uh, once. Um, when the child comes, uh, either his uh, father or mother will be teaching them, uh, dear son, this is the mountain, this is the sun. Uh, the sun will be in the sky, the mountain will be very huge. You need to tell them. Uh, but uh, the child may ask, this is also in triangle shape, this is also in triangle shape. How do you say this is mountain and this is samosa? So this is how the learning happens. We need to educate the machine learning model. That is, we need to educate the machine that we are going to uh, talk to in the manner it understands. We need to, that, that's what, uh, for a machine uh, to tell it is a sun and a mountain, we need to tell them again and again through thousands of images, lakhs of images, we need to give different sets of mountains. Okay, so this is the huge set of figure that is in the triangle shape will be mountain. That now I understand what is happening here. So this is how it is like a, empowering a machine uh, like a baby. Uh, you need to educate it again and again with what it is. Uh, next slide, please. Knowledge base. Yes, that is the one. Knowledge base or historical data or the trained data set of uh, or the few uh, key terms that is used in machine learning. Um, that is the core part. Machine learning runs around the, the code that you are using in machine learning. It might be very simple. It might be uh, the code that need, uh, that runs in and around the entire factory might be using uh, a single uh, page of code. But what matters is the knowledge base. What knowledge it, it has. The knowledge is nothing but the historical data that we are feeding into the system. We need to uh, classify each image that we are giving. We need to classify each objects that we are uh, inputting into the knowledge base. So these are all the things that uh, the machine will understand. Okay, so when next time when the machine says that, okay, there is something called rectangular shape of images. So what will it, what will it do? It will uh, take the re rectangular uh, shape of image that it is seeing against all of the uh, existing models that it has. So uh, based on the say, uh, it has a rectangular shape of a brick, a stone brick, and then uh, the bureau or a court or anything. So uh, say it, um, the more accuracy. Uh, 
say it is seeing a uh, image of Vero, which is in a rectangular shape, tall rectangular shape, and then uh, it is uh, like analyzing with uh, what it is having in the database. So uh, it will be uh, considering all those things, the nearest accuracy, uh, which matters in the historical data or knowledge base, it will tell you that, okay, from my understanding, I see it is a Vero. It will tell you like that. So this is what happens uh, in a computer vision. I hope I have given a good amount of clarity over what computer vision is. Uh, I would like to hand it over to uh, Balaji on like uh, how we use computer vision of artificial intelligence in our factory premises uh, to make it as a better place, uh, better productive place. Thank you for the opportunity, Balaji. And before I wind up to Balaji, like I would like to take one more moment uh, to tell you about uh, what are the applications of uh, two examples of computer visions. Say, uh, say there is a um, entry exit gate uh, in your industrial uh, area. Uh, you are fixing a computer. You are appointing a person uh, to monitor uh, what are all the vehicles coming, vehicle model, vehicle number, um, and entry time and all. But why not? Uh, like it will. Uh, there is a high chance that the person might be uh, missing to note uh, what it is. Um, so that's where our machine learning model comes. So we give our uh, machine learning model to the power to read what type of vehicle it is, whether it is a bike or a car or a cycle or a track or uh, any kind of thing. And uh, what are the number plates it has? So this is how we empower the machine learning model. So uh, next time when the when your factory is uh, empowered with the artificial intelligence uh, system, the optical character recognition, uh, it doesn't need uh, a person to monitor uh, who, which vehicle is coming and what is the vehicle number and when it is uh, when it has arrived exactly. So you need to just have need to place a camera looking at the pathway that is uh, riding the vehicle into the industrial premises or leaving the way to the uh, vehicles. So uh, it will uh, see uh, it is a vehicle and it knows how to where to uh, look for the number plate and then uh, from the number plate uh, it will extract uh, as you see in the screen. Uh, the first one is the number plate that is uh, the camera reading. The next thing is it will be uh, breaking uh, breaking down into a grayscale image that it will have only black and white color. So now uh, the objects will be in black color and the rest of the things will be in uh, white color. From that it will be splitting. So it, the machine knows that it needs to extract the letters from it. So it will specifically look for the letters. Uh, it is 4YZ H48. So this, it will break down into the components and then uh, you might be asking the question like, um what if the font uh, different uh, some persons will write their number plates in paint some person will use the uh, polyvinyl stickers how do you identify it? that we need to uh, like i said in the previous step we need to uh, empower our machine learning uh, with the large amount of data that uh, the vehicles might have a large number of number plates see machine the vehicles will have a large number of number plates and you need to identify it see this is the uh, set of images uh, to identify you for polyvinyl stickers. This is the set of images for you to identify the uh, painted uh, stickers. So these are the things you need to do and you need to uh, save it to the system about uh, what it is doing. So this is what, uh, what this is one such application uh, where uh, computer vision is used. Next slide, please. And this is facial recognition. Almost uh, facial recognition doesn't need an uh, introduction. Almost all the smart uh, phones that are arriving in uh, after 2018, have facial recognition. When you you do not uh, previously it was fingerprint, uh, it was using fingerprint. Uh, now it is doing uh, facial recognition. What is happening in facial recognition? Uh, please take a close look at the images shown in this uh, slide, uh, the presentation. Uh, it will uh, when the camera looks at you, it will uh, jot down your face in the nodal points. Uh, as you see in the right uh, images, it is uh, jotting down your face in the nodal point. So this is how um, before you unlock your system, you will be authorizing enough you know, to uh, register your face that this is me. You should open, uh, unlock the uh, phone only for me and not anybody else. So uh, this is uh, how the communication happened in the overview. But what happens in the uh, bottom level? The bottom level happens is okay. This is the face. This is the face means I need to jot down these points. Like uh, when you uh, ask a person, how does the person look like? You will like say he is a fat person. His uh, like a face is round face or something. But computer does not work like that. It will uh, um, understand like okay. So the uh, dif uh, adjacent distance between the each eyebrow of that person is uh, ten centimeter when it is this level. Uh, the nose uh, shape is uh, triangular or not a lengthy. Uh, 
this is how it interprets uh, based on your uh, facial structure you jot down the nodal points and connect all those points and uh, save it in the system so next time when you look at the, your camera uh, it will be uh, checking its database and uh, uh, coming back to you okay sir this is you that's why uh, when you wear a mask uh, like uh, grow your uh, long beard it will not be able to uh, um, penetrate it uh, carefully so this is what uh, happens in facial recognition this is uh, a small uh, two features that uh, where computer vision is uh, playing a major role uh, there are much more examples but i do not want to bore you in that uh, let's jump on to uh, what we are here for that is uh, how artificial enable uh, artificial intelligence in industry thank you uh, so much for your time we will meet it back thank you thank you thank you thank you hari um, so uh, everyone welcome to the world of ai where the artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, how it can address safety quality and productivity for the factories so uh, so we will be going through uh, uh, set up things right now first let's pick what it's meant for factories so as of today 35 billion devices are connected to internet and more and more devices are expected to connect to internet and the manufacturers especially the factories have lot of sensors already in place but are we using them for really are we using it for our revenue generation or for driving insights into our revenue what if if we can there are smart factories that is going to come and they are going to generate as much as 33.7 trillion dollar of business value in 2025 and you know 2025 is not very far how factories in india can be part of it how we can be in that market market trend in india we have highly automated partly automated and manually uh, manual driven factories and so on uh, we 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 have a varying set of in factories around in india but still the safety and quality is unpredictable and i'm sure every one of you have one example why safety and quality is unpredictable i'm sure every one of you have gone through some scenarios in your experience facing the issues that have happens with the safety here in india we use lot of lots of jugot innovations we like like you have seen lot of youtube videos and lot of things floating around in whatsapp and so on how we invent ourselves instead of very expensive equipment so how we can tap that knowledge to make it better in in india our factories generate tons of patterns for example if you take a, a, a foundry or a auto industry they do generate lot of things a day and every day they learn something every day they discover something and all this are hotly analyzed and they are not feed forwarded because it's very difficult to feed forward because our human have some limitation we were, we will be able to do only certain task whereas we will not be able to remember everything so we need to have something extraordinary to have that feed forward mechanism and what if if we have a magic computer that can analyze this data and give us insights what if if we can continuously predict the quality of our products with less labor cost so the here is the idea is not to reduce the human we all should understand that artificial intelligence is not going to reduce human is not going to take away the jobs from human so for example we have been told some 20 years back that computers are coming to take away the jobs of kanaka pillai but still today the kanaka pillai or the accountant is there and only he can give the better insights than the computer computer can give only the guidelines it cannot be the final decision maker so what is if we can foresee which products are likely to have flaws and planning and the main thing is what if if you can do all this with simple laptops and mobile app in your factory so when we were talking about artificial intelligence you all might be thinking that i need to buy some expensive computers and uh, devices to take care of this that is not the case like how everything is evolving this artificial intelligence driven things are also reducing in its cost and it is affordable and we have already proven it in some factories that you can run it with a simple laptop and some with a simple existing setup so i understand we said we will show you real demos i request every participants here to watch this video very carefully 
because this is the core essence of this presentation. So you can see in this presentation that we we are able to analyze something that is happening in your factory and we are able to view that both on your desktop laptop and on your mobile phone. We will show you all this in detail. So now comes the most important part, which uh, during our learnings in factories, uh, we are all engineers, but we don't have experience really what is happening inside the factories because basically we are computer engineers, but last 12 months we have spent a lot of time in the factories to understand what are all the things that are involved in safety and uh, the most thing that is happening in the world right now, what is important is PPE compliance. So for factories, it is helmet gloves mask and so on i don't need to say that you all know that much better than us but right now everyone started knowing the value of ppe because of corona now many people don't know what is quarantine what is ppe now they know what is ppe means and they know that we have to wear mask when we go out in the market and in, in, in outside streets and so on so what is happening in this video is a guy was trying to do something uh, inside the factory and a goggle is missing and we are able to detect it. So here, we just took an example where we have asked certain people to wear the key PPE compliance like uh, the safety jacket, the go mask, goggles, shoes and so on. And you can see there are some persons who wearing it and not wearing it. And you can see that we were able to detect how many is wearing the helmet, gloves, vest, uh, safety vest, and so on. So here is a simple accident detection. So what is happening is we just try to make a small uh, video here where we are trying to emulate an accident between a car and two bikes. And you can see that we are able to uh, identify this is motorcycle and this is a car. And you can see the warning is already rising that this is an accident. Okay. So the thing is, we will not be able to tell or prevent the accident. We will be able to tell only an accident happened and immediately alert the nearby, nearby hospitals and so on. So the golden hours will be provided by us the, the golden hours when the accident happened will be able to predict by us and in the sense artificial intelligence you can see the entire warehouse got uh, into a mess that is an accident and you can see here that already it was captured that an accident happened now the most important part you can see that a guy was carrying something on, on your can it could be an oil or diesel or something and and it got spilled over here it got spilled over here so now the spillage has been detected the spillage has been detected so the beauty of the spillage detection is this can 
this can avoid near miss accidents okay so when we were able to tell that the floor got wet and someone have to clean the floor then we can avoid this near miss accident because you all know what will happen when the floor got wet someone may get spilled step on it and so on. This video is about cotton drop can be counted. Let's say you have a factory where you wanted to measure whether a person is working or not. This is what the productivity is about because when a person is not working, it is a very expensive process, very expensive when it, it is in a foundry because the foundry have to have that start time to set the temperature, everything. And then when the person is not doing the right job, then we are losing something called energy. Eventually it is affecting our productivity. So when you can see that in that video, we were, we were able to detect whether a person is opening a door or not. So in this COVID situation, many factories are uh, facing an issue where they want to make sure only allocated number of people are inside the storeroom or in a given room and they don't exceed it. When they exceed, then it is an issue. The beauty here is we can tell like how many people can be in the room. We can define like I want only five people or 50 people or two people. When it exceeds that number, then it will make an audio announcement saying, please don't overcrowd in the room. The good thing about this is the company supervisor or the owners don't need to walk around and say this. There will be an auto detection and auto audio announcement will be made. By this, the laborers and the workers don't need to fight with the supervisor and, and have a, a different opinion. So when it is done by computer, we, are all, we, are, we will all listen to it, just like how we listen to the railway gate. When it was when it was a manual gate, a lot of accidents happened. When it is becoming a when it became an automatic railway gate, we all respect to it. Same thing happens with the traffic police. If it is a traffic police, we will be just bypassing it and then we will go over and then we don't care sometimes. But if it is the light, then we respect that light. When the camera is there, when the, then we are more cautious and we, we respect the signals. Same thing in the toll gate. You might know a lot of examples what happens in the toll gates. People, especially uh, some big shots of people, don't respect the toll gates. But what if, if it is operated by computer, wherein I will show the card and then only the barricade will open, then we can let the vehicle to pass by. Then there is no uh, empowerment and all to show that I can do this and so on. <laughs> Here, this is our office. In our office, usually we let people to uh, have a coffee time for 20 minutes, but sometimes people take more time and spend their time, which will eventually affect our productivity. So if we go and announce that, please go back to your seat, then they will be like, why are you micromanaging us? Why not you give us some time like that? But what if, if we can have an announcement saying, you have already enjoyed your coffee time for 20 minutes. Now let's go back and work so that we can our day can be very productive because work is work. Here is not about micromanagement. It is about work. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Now I would like to uh, go back to uh, the one of the important question. Um, so very soon we will be having a question and answer section. So we have you noticed something important in this demos? The clue is CCTV system. So we will come back to you. What what is that important thing that you have noticed? So. Let me now go through some of the quick things to know about how fact, uh, AI meant for factory safety and so on. So it is always better to be safe than sorry. And you all know already the importance of various PPE equipments. And um, when it comes to safety in the factory, you, you definitely all have uh, examples related to vehicles or screen, crane pots are very, very important and any uh, obstruction in that will cause a pain. Identification alert for imminent collision because sometimes a big object may fall on someone's head. People detection in the path of ladder transfer car. So in factories and all, it's this sometimes it happens. So what if, if we alert and then employee moving near a metal sorting furnace? Again, you all may have an example in your life with the factories, someone who might have died in uh, because they went to a furnace without noticing something or they might have lost their vital organs uh, or their body parts because of the accident. And identification alert for any falling objects because you all know when a screwdriver or a nuts or bolt falls from a 14th floor, then it may lead to even a death. Alerts for spillage of liquid metals, which is the key things for near miss. Identification of furnace gas leakage. So I'm sure you all know because since we started uh, becoming part of this safety uh, in factory studies, we have seen how many accidents are happening in, in the name of gas leakage and so on. And one such example is what happened in the Neyveli and another example is what happened in the Visagapatnam. Surat. Yeah. Surat. 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 yeah. And then safety of housekeeping staff at critical area identifying punctures at wa wagons and so on, and optimizing automated, automate the wagon tripler process and so on. Now I would like to uh, insist, so on, tell on, share on example with you. Here you can see the work forklift is unfortunately the hit one person who was trying to do something on the floor and he fell down and the possibility that he may die or not is very high, okay? And eventually what happens is they will arrest the company owner and the safety officer. Recently, they are arresting the safety officer as well. But if I am the safety officer, I would fight with them saying this is not my responsibility because I have given them enough inspection training and asked them to follow the SOP, standard operating procedures and protocols, stickers, uh, safety signage, everything. But the safety officer were getting arrested. And you know more stories than us, more real pain than us. So what if we can prove to them that you have established those SOP protocols so that those safety officers are safe and even the company owners are safe. We have the solution for that. And that is what artificial intelligence can tell us. I'm sure you all might have guessed what we can do with that. Quality assurance of your factories using AI. So there is always a loss and gain, and we will be able to address this loss and gain with the help of uh, artificial intelligence, wherein the high cost quality standard monitoring can be reduced to a better accuracy of defects and dissections, and, and then the human fatigues and inefficiency, because you, you all know that when someone is working from morning nine o'clock to evening six o'clock, just after the lunch, he, he may feel very sleepy and the possibility of accident happening during the lunch hour is very high. 
or the possibility of uh, some low productivity or quality happening after the lunch is very high what if if we have a system to make an alert and 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 so that our productivity can be improved slow speed slow inspection speed and low productivity can be improved with the low inspection cost and high produce for business success because we will be having lot of sensors and other indications to inform us that these are all the things you should uh, address so um i'm sure in factories the production line monitoring is one of the most important thing and ai can help in ensuring the optimal product and product quality so you all know some examples wherein the there is a machine which will break the egg it will move the egg shell in one one lay one lane and then and then the egg yolk or the yellow part into another lane and then the white part white portion into another lane so similarly we can drive our production line uh, conveyors to make the good one into the right way and then the uh, rejected one into the right rejection box and so on identification and stoppage or problems and we will be able to prevent the error from the source itself with the help of sensors and other equipments and we will be able to alert and make a ident- make an uh, informed decision so improve productivity at factories using ai so most important thing is best data driven decision can be made either by human or with computer but what if if we can take the help from computer have the data points in our laptop or on your mobile phone without any human intervention and make make a proper decision and that is what will improve the productivity and the productivity means lot actually i would like to add one uh, sentence or uh, one kural from tirukural that is porul karvi kalam vinai idanodu aindum irul thira enni sayal so i am sure you all know the meaning of this uh, tirukural so we have to address all those i all those uh, important key factors so when it comes to productivity in factory we have to ensure on time completion of task and that means we have to reduce the wastage we have to reduce the wastage of operation because if you start some engine you cannot stop it there are some engines that have to run 24 by 7 and what if if you start and no people is using it or someone went for a smoke went for a coffee or tea and you are you cannot keep monitoring it all the time but work this work when someone have to work at that time they have to work at that time that is why the company is paying whether it is me or anyone so the artificial intelligence will be able to record all those information provide real time monitoring of assets and we will be able to optimize our warehouse management we will be able to record all those such features like loading and unloading time and so on all this can be tracked on a dashboard like what you what you are seeing here will be able to see on your dashboard i will just quickly show you this dashboard you can see uh, this is a simple dashboard with various incidents over here and then some statistics like how the productivity trend is going on for a week how many pp violation happened uh, how many near miss incidents happened how the sop compliance is going on right now the key sop compliance because of corona is social distancing and mask detection how many cartons or productivity is happening okay now, now let's take one small example there is an incident it's saying the productivity rate appears to be slower than yesterday okay and it happened on 23rd june why because you see in this area we really don't need five people to discuss something and if they are discussing for more than 5 minutes then it is not a productive discussion so then that is eventually affecting the productivity especially when it is on your line product product line or line production every minute matters because if one person delay for one minute then eventually it will affect 23 minutes of delay and eventually it will lead to 250 minutes delay per day so everyone knows how important is product line optimization is stop crowding exceeding the daily threshold so this example you all know the good thing about here is you can 
take some decision here. You can say like this is marked as resolved. You can add a comment. You can report to a manager so that the manager will take, will inform. He is not going to take any severe action, but he will give a warning. And what if, if you can collect all those warnings, go with an evidence and talk to a person, then he won't fight with you. He will be very logical. Okay, I understand you have all the proof. So I, I will obey the rule. We will go back to our presentation. So I understand, Hari, we have 10 more minutes. Uh, so over to you, Hari. Thank you, Balaji. Uh, so when we talk about productivity inside the uh, factory, uh, we cannot uh, obviously uh, omit the what OEE, overall equipment effectiveness. What is overall equipment effectiveness is that uh, whether you are um, able to make sure your all your equipments, all your labors are uh, make a proper uh, high resolution throughput. So uh, there will be a total calendar time. Uh, Balaji, please uh, continue going to next uh, slide. Yeah, uh, the total calendar time will be uh, cut shortened by the total schedule time. What happen uh, makes this? That is uh, breaks and weekends. Uh, in the to uh, considering a taken uh, official year or uh, uh, January to uh, December year. Uh, there will be uh, weekends and breaks of all your machines. And that is what uh, subtracted from the total calendar time. It will be total scheduled time. And uh, even in the sh total scheduled time, you will not be able to uh, make your efficiency uh, maximum because of the uh, production availability that is uh, being done. Balaji? Yeah, please uh, consider going to the next slides. Uh, yeah. Available production. What it is uh, causing that? The planned downtime it may be because of the updates that you are providing to the your tool and it may be a periodical uh, maintenance that might be uh, reducing your uh, machine's availability time and even if your machine your machine is available uh, without having to consider the maintenance updates there will be the time which the machine will be uh, running it what it is availability loss whether the machine can be uh, breaking down or uh, there will be no raw material uh, for the machine to operate, or uh, there will be uh, tools exchange uh, happens in the middle. So that is what uh, delaying. Then uh, after the uh, running time, uh, the net operation time, uh, even the machine will be running, but you will not be able to uh, extract the throughput that you wanted to achieve. What might be causing it? The performance loss, that is micro stoppage, the, uh, the power fluctuations or the workers uh, intrusion or so and so. Even in the your net operation time, you will not be uh, able to uh, reach out to the maximum productivity or maybe the quality loss. After considering all these things in your total calendar time, after phasing the maintenance updates, breakdown, micro stoppage and quality things, uh, still you will not be able to get the maximum throughput that you wanted to achieve. Uh, this is because of the uh, how much productivity, because of the quality loss. Uh, the manufacturing defects that occur in the uh, items that you are uh, manufacturing in your factory. So uh, how do we uh, identify these factors uh, uh, through the CCTV cameras or the other cameras that is uh, set for the specific set of purpose? Uh, when you are like during the, the available production time, we cannot uh, monitor the total calendar time and the total schedule time and we are because we are aware of the breaks and weekends that we're going to. But we can specifically monitor the micro stoppage and the quality loss and uh, breakdown or the productivity less uh, that happens in between the running time when the uh, uh, through our camera uh, we can train our artificial intelligence system uh, to tell you that the machine is ready but the workers are not properly uh, putting up the loading of the raw materials for the machine to operate uh, it will tell you like so uh, the machine is turned on on uh, 9 a.m in the morning but uh, the raw material has not been loaded up uh, till 10 a.m so uh, at the end of the day or the, the at the end of the week or the, at the end of the month you will have a report generated by our artificial intelligence system looking at okay uh, so uh, in your overall running time uh, totally 34 hours of productivity has been damaged due to the workers talking in the middle and uh, the no proper supply of raw material uh, this might be happening because of the intrusion by other uh, worker happening uh, in this so our machine will be looking all those things you might not have one supervisor for all machines running uh, here and there uh, to let you know about the accuracy but you will have artificial intelligence power system to tell you these are the things that you need to concentrate on so next time uh, when you uh, get to know that uh, you are uh, 
productivity is affecting because of the like a uh, social chat or something like that or your machine productivity that the machine frequency shuts down you will be able to identify the predictive analysis that we are through this we will be uh, able to make a proactive decision which will uh, increase your uh, um, throughput uh, to the maximum level that you have like uh, the ideal output level will be attained to that so this is how, how uh, the overall equipment effectiveness can be calculated using artificial intelligence thank you balaji thank you hari uh, my dear participants we have two more slides only so we would like to uh, move on with the next one that is uh, how ai works with the uh, iot sensors i am sure every one of you have come across uh, voc and eco2 sensors especially voc sensor is a very important one um, that that we uh, learned and uh, found the useful of that useful of that and then there are several energy saving sensors for example we have like how we have home automation industry automation for energy savings is becoming a, a need of the hour because like like in my home i won't let a fan or a tube light running when no one is there unless if it is after 6 pm even if after 6 pm we won't have the fan running or the ac running for empty empty uh, uh, empty hall similarly in industry it's very difficult we have to have something always running but overall it is costing them a huge cost and then the unit rate for industry is always high they have to pay compared to uh, com the commercial unit rate from uh, electricity board is high what if if we can how what if if we can control them the thing is people will tell that you install the sensor so that it can do all this magic and so on but those sensors are driven by one decision they have to be trained again and again so that they can make a better decision and that is where artificial intelligence is coming temperature and humidity sensor people in the foundry industry knows very well how important is temperature and humidity sensor what will be the quality of the product or the overall product line if something a simple change in temperature will will cause machine on off sensors range sensor level sensor and infrared sensor this, those are all very important the key thing about how ai and iot works is all these sensors generates gigabytes and terabytes and petabytes of data and we will not be able to do any decision by going through those things our human mind have a limitation we will be able to check through like 100 lines or 200 lines and then definitely we may make a mistake when it comes to some numbers and that's where the artificial intelligence is coming you will be able to feed the data to a computer write an algorithm and make a decision or have them suggest a decision and finally what is meant for ai and industry 4.0 is i'm sure many of you here already know what is uh, what is industry 4.0 and industry 4.0 have like various sections like how we can apply uh, how we can improve the productivity by buying automated uh, automated machines uh, high high some of them are highly expensive machines and so on some of the automations can be done by better tracking and so on uh, how the quality can be improved security can be improved safety can be improved and so on while the industry 4.0 is driving us towards uh, better equipments better infrastructure the key thing is those infrastructure have to be connected with the computer then we will be able to make a better decision an informed decision if they are not connected then it is like a simple tv box the tv box will keep running or the refrigerator will keep running and so on but we need advanced advanced uh, uh, decision making capability and that is where ai can be the number one driving factor for the industry 4.0 initiatives so um that is all for today and we would like to hand over the session to mr freenath thank you sir thank you so much that was really a uh, great session <laughs> very informative for us thank you and we are uh, like uh, can we go into the q and a session i hope there are two questions which have been already answered okay <laughs> yes we think i believe <laughs> so we will uh, so we have some 
questions in mind uh, which we would like to just make it a little interactive just a moment yeah uh, so if uh, if someone is raising the hands definitely we can give them the opportunity to discuss directly uh, meanwhile we'll just go through the question and answer just been given in this uh, q and a uh, tab oh okay uh, uh, just one question which has already been answered is all these are normal cctvs can do what is the where is the role of artificial intelligence do you mean the cctv is based on ai so i believe the answer given by uh, your cctv is just capturing the incidents artificial intelligence powers the systems to identify that the incident has happened which means the the current uh, artificial intelligence what we discussed can be integrated with their existing cctv is that right sir yes it can be uh, integrated with the existing cctv and uh, those cctv systems are very uh, it's not very costly that uh, the cctv camera are like 2000 rupees that camera is enough that 2 megapixel 2000 rupees camera is enough or really mag- that's really a great news <laughs> when a 2 megapixel camera can capture the details which we are discussing uh, for the artificial intelligence sir yes yes it is and we can we, we whatever we have shown you in the real demo they are at least 3 years old camera so oh. that the challenge we took so we we haven't went anything with the great uh, latest camera some of them are costing like 8000 rupees some of them are costing like 2 lakhs and so on so very simple cameras great 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 and the second question uh, can we integrate the already installed fire and uh, detection system with this yes yes thank you mr vinod yeah thank you mr vinod bala subramaniam for that question uh, yes we can integrate the key thing is those fire and detection system should have some hooks or some information be able to integrate with our system uh, as long as uh, they have a sensor that can tell us that some incident happened then the supervisor the company owner will get an sms uh, notification lo- like how you are having in your whatsapp notification and so on much all those things can happen the thing is we can even inform to the nearest hospital and alert the ambulance driver to come to the site area immediately all those can be done and we are working on a real demo for that great great sir hope that has answered the question of uh, mr vinod and uh, the next question is can we can we have the list of places it is running from mr ganapati subramaniam uh, thank you hope you will uh, send a mail across <laughs> <laughs> thank you mr ganapati subramaniam uh, right now we have a non disclosure agreement um, so just to give you a clue uh, we are running it in a place near irungattu kottai inside irungattu kottai uh, ambattur estate and then a place in tirupur uh, a textile industry in tirupur uh, so we got an advice from uh, freedom safety that we should be very careful on disclosing the names so it's a big lesson for us so definitely sir we can take this offline okay so the next question is from mr perumal manoharan uh, all these detection will be communicated to a centralized system or local system whether too many signals and uh, okay the line the that question got cut over there yeah i believe okay uh, all this detection will be communicated to a centralized system or local system so it is uh, your choice uh, mr perumal um, you can you can send it to a central cloud or you can send it to a uh, local system and so on uh, so th- that is your choice actually okay so which means uh, existing cctv uh, wherever we are recording the videos the same system will be recording this artificial intelligence data also yes yes right, that sir? is correct that is correct we all we have to do is when you connect to an existing cctv system uh, you will be having an hdmi cable and then you will be viewing it on a led tv uh, where what is happening in the uh, cctv and so on all we have to do is take that uh, output from cctv system and connect to 
a laptop or a desktop computer that is all okay got it sir so the next question is from mr ganesh and murli dharan i have a process vessel for which if the temperature exceeds a certain limit it would be leading to unsafe condition leave alone sensor or safety system already installed in the vessel if the safety system fails can a prevent the accident okay i will try to understand your question uh, mr ganeshan uh, so you have a process vessel for which if the temperature exceeds a certain limit it would be leading to unsafe condition uh, sir do, do you mind re explaining that question again Uh, let me see if i could give the mic to him okay uh, yes sir mr murli sir yes yes kek da yes sir kek sir kek na My question is hello. Already, I have a safety system. If the temperature exceeds certain limit, limit there will be a there will be a micro switch that stops the increase of temperature. This is the system already we are following. We have two three alternative. If one system fails, another another will lag. Our main aim is to avoid increase of temperature. That's all. So, what will be artificial intelligence role in? Uh, sir what will happen is this data will be uh, given to the system the artificial intelligence system like okay. how a sensor data is given to the uh, artificial intelligence system so whether it is a temperature or gas leak it, we have to define what is the right temperature from okay. which furnace it is coming from and from from which vessel it is coming from and then it will tell a decision and it can even trigger an action to control it and and make an audio announcement and so on sir so the answer is yes okay okay thank you so i'll be informed before then yes sir am i right yes sir okay the, our our core interest or the focus here is uh, as advised by one of our safety officer we are trying to be both reactive and proactive we are taking both actions sir both reactive and proactive sir okay okay then thank you thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir okay the next question is uh, from mr bermal manoharan again okay. and the question is happy to note that security is also covered in artificial intelligence chemical security is the focus area globally okay so yes sir <laughs> yes sir actually uh, need of that is that chemical safety and security <laughs> <laughs> yes yes if we add this plus 2 then productivity and quality will automatically increase the next question is for from mr palnish shami for store room and shop floor people monitoring which camera is suitable for this yes sir uh, thank you mr palnish shami the for a simple camera sir like uh, a 2 meg megapixel camera that is kept on the corner of a storeroom is enough sir but the question is how big is your storeroom how big is your shop floor so there is a coverage there is a limit so we managed to cover up to 15 meters sir we, up to 15 meters with a simple camera we were able to detect whether a person is sitting or standing so you may be thinking as evil why this person is detecting whether a person is sitting or standing am i not being very cunning and uh, measuring my pers- um, uh, uh, worker privacy so the answer is work is work at work we have to follow some protocol because if i am sitting and doing a welding then it is an, it will lead to an accident during a welding process i have to stand but if sometimes humans because of their daily routine job they will try to do some careless thing and that's where the uh, accident happen so the answer is sir simple cameras sir okay sir i hope the answer the question uh, next question is from uh, mr rambe for monitoring speed of the vehicle 
and identifying those who are violating speed limits, what would be the probable cost from Satish? Thank you, Mr. Satish. Uh, so what, what we have been seeing in Chennai area uh, is we, in the last four months, we can, we are seeing a tremendous number of installation of speed cameras and cameras. And uh, we don't know the cost it takes, actually, because this is a different domain. Our focus is on factory and the factory operations, uh, especially what vehicles are entering the factory, whether it is a two-wheeler, bike, uh, sorry, two-wheelers or four-wheelers, truck, what time it entered, uh, what time that loading, unloading happened, what is the container names and so on. That is where we are focusing. The speed of vehicle also we are focusing. For example, we are doing a study wherein the speed of vehicle is very important inside the factory itself. They cannot exceed certain speed because of the load and uh, the human walking around and so on. So, and I believe the limitation or the recommended speed is 15 kilometers per hour. So to answer, I, sorry, sir, we don't know the answer for your question as it is not in our uh, area of focus. Thank you, sir. The next question is from Mr. Albert Aragiraj. What is the approximate cost for installation and commissioning of artificial intelligence and safety management? Which is actually your product uh, and whatever we discussed uh, the last one hour is going to be a game changer in safety management system, definitely. So now people are interested in uh, understanding the cost impact. Yes. yes. There are many questions I could see on this uh, cost. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's a very good question. Uh, I'll just take a moment. Uh, so I, I have seen some message from Mr. Uh, Punya Kodi that there is a lot of background noise. Uh, some is not. Some of us were not able to hear or something. So we will do our best to reduce the background noise. So what it will what it will cost uh, for installation and commissioning of AI in safety management. So the cost is an important factor. The most important thing is these solutions are not plug and play like we cannot just put it there and make it run because we have to teach them we have to teach what is storeroom what is shop floor what is furnace and so on basic things we will teach it already and we will we will show that because we know who is human who is not human what is a nut bolt spanner and so on beyond that we have to do something called discovery phase so for the first one to three months we will do the discovery phase in a given factory understand their process operations and so on so there involves some cost in that after that it is completely driven by cameras and features <clears throat> what is camera and feature so let's say you have a storeroom and you want to have only one feature feature that is avoid overcrowding in the storeroom so that is one feature the second thing is you want to know what objects are moving out from your storeroom so that is second feature so we cost based on based on those features one feature the starting price is from 3000 rupees per month and then it goes based on the requirement that you have specifically so we came to the value of 3000 or so based on various factors that it involves so that is the starting price sir um, and it, it there are installation costs is there and again it depends on the needs for a small factory a computer with with around 1 lakh or 1.5 lakhs is enough sir for a very small factory a simple laptop is enough sir a laptop these days are costing from 30,000 to six, several several lakhs even. But a simple laptop starting from 35,000 or 30,000 mm -hmm. and a camera is enough to do an operation, sir. So uh, the range start based on the needs that we want. So far, we have identified 250 features can be done. And as we work with you, we will be able to identify more. I hope we answered your question, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
uh, let's move to the next question sir it would have been nice to have a few real incident investigation uh, cctv videos in factories from mr murli dar uh, thank you mr murli daran uh, actually uh, sorry mr murli dara uh, actually in the factories that where we are running uh, there are some real incidents that happened sir uh, we do not have permission to share it right now at one point we will share it so uh, that is the reason we have created an animation video as per that advice and shown you some uh, uh, some incident actually if you can suggest that these are all the uh, real incidents that can happen we will be able to uh, give you how we can address that and how we can be both reactive and proactive sir okay thank you sir uh, the next question is currently we are using normal cctv camera is it possible to upgrade and use the same camera for artificial intelligence monitoring from mr tk parnichami uh, thank you mr uh, tk parnichami yes we will be able to use it sir thank you sir the next question is from mr ms rao do we need a bms system for integration of all uh, detection systems sir that is a very nice question sir uh, the bms system and uh, factories goes together um, the entire bms is a very big topic and uh, there are uh, so the thing is yes sir we have to integrate with that so many factories who have their own bms system implemented already which will tell the level of certain vessels the uh, level of um, the the air conditioning air conditioning functioning effectiveness uh, the the temperatures and so on and there are very well established bms integration sorry bms systems are available sir but those bms are not artificial intelligence driven they are also stepping into artificial intelligence what we are trying to do and many of many are trying to do is how we can make use of the cctv system and bms because certain some bms will not be able to tell how many people are there in your room in your store room based on that we will be able to take a decision some bms don't make use of the cctv system and detect the anomaly that we can do so a strong integration with the bms is very important and that is where we are also focusing and we started integrating with them thank you sir uh, let's move on to the next question what are the hardware and software for, for ai systems from mr albert arogiraj uh, thank you mr albert uh, so the hardware and software for ai system is you the key thing is you have to use an existing cctv system uh, for a small factory it will it will be like a 20 to 30000 rupees with which you will be able to cover at least five cameras and a simple dvd or dvir uh, and then uh, uh, one terabyte of hard disk and so on for a small factory like i mentioned sir a simple laptop is enough sir but based on the number of features if you want to do facial recognition people tracking whether a person is sitting or standing during the working hours the more and more the process in intensity is the cost will increase sir uh, and it is directly beneficial if you employ a supervisor he will be costing somewhere between 10000 rupees to 20000 or 30 40000 rupees per month based on his uh, skill set and the level of operation so if you say the factory is having like 10 supervisor then obviously the cost per month will be at least 3 lakhs to 10 lakh per month so the cost of this hardware and software will be 1/4 or 1 one one second of that sir like 50% of that that is the aim we are driving towards and it depends on the features sir i want to make one important um, statement here we are not trying to replace humans we are not trying to make humans redundant we are trying to make humans more empowered and power um, informed so that they can make a better decision that is what every artificial intelligence is moving towards sir thank you sir uh, the next question is uh, do you have any specifications of camera which used to monitor wear ppe for employees from uh, mr tk banichami 
which is like is there any specific uh, specifications of camera required to monitor the pp compliance in workshop work uh, work proof yes sir uh, sir no specific camera sir uh, actually a uh, 2 megapixel camera is enough sir uh, but um, if you are working in the night hours uh, then if instead of increasing the camera cost if you can add few more lights uh, then that the, then you can address also in the night hours sir simple sir we anyway uh, we don't want to stay the word simple uh, the examples are uh, dawa camera um high k hk vision cameras those are all the ones sir the one that we are just using uh, the whole demonstration that we have shown you the camera the the costliest camera we used was 1d 3500 rupees sir that's the costliest one we have used and uh, you can go with simple one sir thank you sir i think uh, this question has already been answered uh, which is what would be the approximate cost for four cameras with ai yes uh, yes we addressed so we'll go to the next one sir can we able to detect the rider traveling in 60 km and more speed in the test track and person needs to be identified with name and id number available in our data uh, from uh, mr tamin basha yes sir uh, it it can be done and uh, uh, that's a nice question uh, i mean basha uh, so there are speed cameras that can identify at 120 kilometers per hour and it can even identify the, the vehicle number plate the person sitting inside it uh, and so on provided it is not a black colored or stickered or something like that which is not normal in this place government have regulations on that uh, so i have seen lavan years back itself Uh, in Switzerland, in European countries, that they can detect at 120 kilometers per hour, and it can tell all our personal details. And this was without using artificial intelligence. So the answer is yes. Oh, great, sir. Uh, that answer. Uh, like, like next question is from Mr. Albert Arakiraj. Is there a portable uh, system of camera and artificial intelligence system which shall fix in a critical work area and shall relocate to other job site after few days uh, that's a very nice question mr albert uh, yes so the the example that we can quote is which we are uh, already implementing in one area is construction industry in construction industry the uh, we will be able to move the camera one floor after another wherein at the entrance of the floor we 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 have kept the camera to watch out who is wearing the pp compliant pp pp equipments and not and then another camera to to check out what is happening in the floor construction area so uh, once that is done they can keep moving to the another area so it is completely movable sir but the location and the area have to be repeatable uh, have to be have to have some common mm -hmm. thing yeah so if 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 it is changed then it it, it cannot sir uh, so that is one critical point and that too uh, after a lot of training like like a baby hari was also mentioning about it uh, it's about how we train the baby we will keep training them that this is fire don't touch don't touch don't touch some baby will go and touch and learn okay this is fire from next time i won't touch and uh, Uh, affect myself similarly we have to keep trying uh, training it sir thank you sir the next question is from mr ms rao are these services are available if so who is the service provider uh, thank you mr rao that is very motivating uh, so we are one of the service provider and uh, i believe you have noted our email id uh, if not i we request you to contact mr prinath uh, in any case our email id is ai at sprightly.com um, so which we mentioned in the uh, email uh, one of our slide thank you sir the next question is from mr dr surya narayanan mahadevan there is something called eye tracker which is already in use is in use in process industry for human behavior is it possible to model human cognitive behaviors um thank you uh, dr uh, surya dr surya narayanan um so this is very interesting question uh, sir what what exactly you mean by human 
cognitive behavior sir is, is it possible to just give us some examples connect with him sir meanwhile uh, we'll discuss the next questions also yes whether the system being talked is suitable for flame proof areas from mr perumal manoharan meanwhile i'll try to connect with dr surya narayan sir you can answer yes. the yes yes thank you um thank you mr perumal again uh, whether the system can be flame proof areas yes sir it can uh, the the thing is uh, the camera should be visible sir so if you are able to see it the camera is able to see it sir if you are not able to see it then the camera cannot detect do anything sir that's the most important factor here our eye and camera eye is same ஒரு <laughs> Let's move on to the next question, sir. Meanwhile, see you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. This is human behavior is a big problem in process industry, right? So people are uh, basically what I'm trying to do is all the accident causation is due to human behavior. That's what the conclusion we get it towards the end. Uh, is it possible with using the artificial intelligence that we can Uh, be able to monitor the human uh, behavior for instance you know how a person is very attentive on a, uh, in the shop floor how he deviates from his uh, uh, performing his uh, duties all those things sir sir that's a very nice uh, question sir uh, doctor thank you for that question uh, doctor guru parayan so we are already doing it for them and not discuss that in the screen room unfortunately we are discussing who is sitting and who is standing and we are also detecting a person should not stand when he is supposed to sit actually if he stand a 2 minutes stand of him will affect 220 minutes of that production line sir because he is in production line of course he can go and take a break only during the break time because it's a production line only only if he do his job then the next party people will be able to take it over and do it so a 2 minutes wastage will lead to that so it may appear like are we doing micro management but we have to do that because it's a work another thing we have done uh, is doing is wrong doings for instance you know we does some unsafe act or something like that yes sir yes sir that is most important actually yes sir we can sir sir i will tell you one more example which we tried but then uh, we we focused our area into factories sir oh. when you go to krishna sweets or adyar anand bhavan or uh, a to b uh, what we expect sir we expect the person not to do like this not to touch his hair not to do no speaking right sir that is very important and there are other things that you can say many sweet shops and all those krishna sweet allocated supervisors to crack them every minute sir their only job is to make sure the person standing behind the counter is being decent to the customer because you cannot take fact that someone is doing a no speaking or cracking his head or Correct. something like that sir yeah. we will be able we we have done that sir we we have demonstrated it to one biggest bakery shop in hyderabad one of the biggest famous uh, bakery shop in hyderabad sir and oh, immediately oh. corona came and yeah. then uh, before, before that itself we were focusing on on factory yeah. so we have given part to that area so oh, i that's fantastic yeah. question <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sir, over to you, Mr. Freena. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, 
the next question is from mr sivaraman annamalai we are doing gas based fire suppression system based on the level of fire inside the room uh, can a trigger whether it is a small fire or a big fire or accordingly activate our system for example if it is small fire then it can be suppressed by manual fire extinguishers over to you sir thank you mr sivaraman yes sir we can uh, we will be able to uh, find out the range or the depth and length of the fire and we will be able to trigger certain actions based on that sir uh, we will be able to precisely measure what is what is the level of the fire and the key thing here is the camera position and where it is happening and so on that is the key thing sir like like a typical human sir let like, let's say you are sitting and watching from one corner on one area where you feel it is very sensitive the same thing applicable for camera so the answer is yes sir thank you sir if yes we would like to integrate with you and test it Hello, from mr sivaraman and namale <laughs> Okay. Uh, the next question from Mr. Sundar Rajan: What are the algorithms and artificial intelligence framework that you are using? Th thank you, Mr. Uh, Sundar Rajan. Uh, we are using lot of algorithms, sir. Uh, face recognition algorithm, uh, human detection algorithm. Um, there is there is lot of algorithms we are using, and uh, we we have we are also using some algorithms from Google. some algorithms from amazon several open source algorithm very soon we are also going to make this available with some conditions to the public so that they can also contribute we are going to provide a pluggable architecture so that people can also contribute to that algorithm and improve the system so if you are uh, very specific about certain algorithms we request you to write to uh, our email id we will we will take this offline and answer your questions sir many are openly available and 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 on top we are applying our algorithms sir thank you sir the next question from mr albert arugraj can you please share the list of 250 features of artificial intelligence which you have developed in your website uh, thank you mr albert uh, sir those 250 features are the one we have identified out of that so far we have reached 20 sir uh, and those 20 itself will cover many many basic needs for a given factory for example we haven't touched the crane we haven't touched the oil and industry yet and so on if it if we take the four or five major industries uh, it can go more than 250 sir we have the list we are going on need basis on demand basis so there are something that we got request from our customers can you do this then we are spending time and building it otherwise we are we are keeping it offline for now sir i hope that address your question thank you sir uh, our next question is from mr uh, mirja soren in recent decade we have seen boiler blast occurs in various thermal power plants is, is that help uh, help us through a artificial intelligence yes definitely so what we have done is uh, we we with the help of uh, our uh, our contacts in safety industry we have studied what happened at navyli and uh, there is so many articles in times of india hindu paper and so on they have listed what are all the things that are happening and they have given the suggestion what could have been done to stop that standard operating procedure so what if we can tell and some what if we can make an audio announcement that sop was failed yes we can another thing is when the need is less the thermal for example in navyli the number of coals being poured should be very slow we can tell whether a person is pouring more number of coal loading more number of coal or less number of coal we will be able to use with a simple camera and tell that the coal being loaded should be controlled or an alert that don't overload the coal so that it may lead into thermal power plant loss and so on so when so the thing is we will be addressing things from the root of 
root of the problem or root of the source from the beginning itself we will be watching why so many people are there or why only less people are there sometimes less number of people itself will lead to accident when the less number of people is there then we will make an audio announcement or an alert to the supervisor to his cell phone mobile phone and and make a decision so this is the whole process sir and we will be able to address that thank you sir uh, the next question is from mr uh, baskar can this system alarm or uh, initiate uh, to us in case of fire in any one of the area uh, yes sir the answer is yes by now yes. you have identified mr baskar yes sir yes uh, there is one more question which is uh, always the last question of the session from mr kumar what are the means in which we can incorporate artificial intelligence in behavioral safety of employees in your perspective uh, actually very... i want to ask this question <laughs> yeah, that's a very nice question uh, mr kumar so uh, so i think factory owners can define what is the behavior of safety of employees uh, because they know with their experience what is good what is not good so we will be able to identify all those which we are doing already uh, the foremost one is if i should stand i should stand if i if i if i am supposed to sit i should sit and work so that's the foremost thing if i am not if if i am not supposed to go to a furnace area even if i am the employee of that factory if i don't have permission to go to that factory furnace area then it cannot alert it can tell a person is entering a restricted area it can even tell that balaji is entering that restricted area where he don't have an access to that level of information we are tracking and we are demonstrate we have demonstrated it already sir so yes the answer is yes sir thank you sir thank you so much i have one question here uh, actually in an industry uh, the the for example if i want to uh, uh, look for some uh, unsafe acts or unsafe uh, conditions unsafe behaviors with uh, employees so i that keeps changing right if i address a particular issue in this week so if i train people and people are uh, following it regularly so which means i can move for other uh, things right so what will be the maximum list which can be incorporated with this uh, artificial intelligence cameras because for example one camera can it monitor only one thing or 10 or what will be the maximum uh, quantities sir okay i will answer one question after another sir one yes. one camera can handle many features for example a camera can one camera can handle uh, so we are just taking the feed we will ask that feed to detect fire to detect people intrusion feed to detect mm -hmm. people poster behavior and so on just one camera like how our eye is but even our eye can do only one thing at a time uh, because that is how we are our humanness but the camera and the artificial intelligence can do multiple things at a time uh, as you have i will share the screen quickly as you have uh, seen in this dashboard these are all the incidents sir like these are all the incidents that are captured in what zone what floor and how is the severity and so on so you will have an historical data and this historical data it can grow as much as your cloud server size and the database capability sir so at one point we can have like billions of data in front of us and take a decision so unlimited sir it's a great idea that and lastly there is one more question which popped up uh, are you implementing ai in, in foundry industry in india if yes can you share the foundry name please i think uh, you have answered this question earlier that there is some uh, non disclosure agreement or some details right if yeah. i'm not wrong <laughs> mm. i'll uh, uh, yes sir I, uh, we will share you the uh, details of the uh, presentation through mail yes the session was uh, really good sir i'll hand it over to dr v sriram now yes sir thank you good evening everybody it is a very very eye uh, opening session for everybody because uh, in the covid era uh, everybody 
going on digital even most of the conference most of the meeting even exhibition start uh, in the web- webinar itself uh, we are meeting and gathering is a very difficult task right now we don't know when we are going to cross all these things so in this uh, conditions uh, artificial intelligence is a very very handy tool for any industry to implement safety uh, mr balaji and uh, mr arik sankar has done a wonderful uh, job on enlightened us about the usage of the artificial intelligence for every walk of life it, it is a custom built tool for suiting the every specific needs of the industries and uh, other industry has done we can do it is not like that every industry they have to do their own design and they have to take the input from that industry and they have to design the control system according to their needs anything can be possible in artificial intelligence there is no limitations because the amount of knowledge the presenters are having definitely able to meet your requirement and anybody interested have can contact them personally and get benefited and it is a really it is a it is a present generation way of dealing the safety and i request everybody to make use of this and thank for the presenters thank for everybody thank you jai hind and uh, th- thank you mr sriram uh, we feel very blessed to uh, have this webinar thank you for giving us an opportunity to present our solution um, so our intention is make people aware of the opportunities and uh, uh, more than more than presenting our product our intention is to make us all be more aware our uh, one of the more one of our core interests is also protect safety officers because uh, recently we are hearing safety officers being arrested when something goes wrong so we want to protect safety officers when the safety officers are protected the factory owners will be protected eventually the workers will be protected so that is our goal sir so thank you again for this wonderful opportunity we request you to give us one more webinar where we will go in deep only addressing safety or quality or productivity more deeper sessions sir we we will we will come back to you on that thank you sir thank you okay. thank you sir thank you with this we come to the end of the session uh thank you for all participants and the presenters thanks thank you sir Uh, we'll meet and next session will be uh, on electrical safety by the eminent uh, person iyo who is the chief of the electrical safety of tamil nadu state retired person he is going to present on electrical safety thank you nice thank you very much thank, thank you, you thank you thank you very much thank you so much for your valuable time thank you sir thank you